Yeah. We killed the fourth person. Killed the had to go. had to go. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Sorry, Jeff. Okay. Massive part. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. My name's Greg. This is Matt and Luke. We've named our group Teachers with Latitude. Because, like latitude lines along the earth, we want learning to be equal and attainable for all students. <laughs> 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 um, so we're doing engaging with Indigenous, indigenous students because we felt we're not really comfortable in that area, and we need to tick off. <laughs> we need to tick off that on the standards. So we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. So first, we're going to acknowledgement. So we acknowledge our meetings on the traditional lands of the Ghana people. Pay respects to elders past present. So a bit of information, you know that there's a bit of a gap between Indigenous students and non-Indigenous students. According to the 2006 census, there was roughly 156,000 Indigenous students in education institutions. Um, they're about 3.3% of the total student population within Australia. 32% um, is less likely to get a year 12 or equivalent uh, qualification. So how do we as teachers erase this gap and keep Indigenous students engaged? So that's what we're going to be looking at. So first of all, I did an, well, we did an acknowledgement, and it's like the modern take of what they do with their cultures in the past, and they still do it now, uh, respecting their country when you enter before and, and while you're in there as well. And this just shows awareness and respect to their country and their culture. So by doing that, we show respect and incorporate the culture in the classroom. Um, the students feel empowered, creates a way for the students to connect to content, incorporating what they already know. Um, teaching through song and storytelling helps Indigenous students connect with the classroom as well, because that's a big thing part of their culture. Um, bringing Indigenous uh, elders in, in and including them in the learning process encourages learning, and integrating the eight Aboriginal ways of learning can be part of our pedagogy. So these four points are in line with a teaching, uh, effective teaching strategies. Inclusiveness, understanding student, our students, and using a range of pedagogies. So it's really, there's not much difference to teaching Indigenous students to, our, um, to all the other students in our classes. We just need to be inclusive and just be mindful and support reconciliation. So the eight ways of Aboriginal pedagogy, uh, that's it there. So, pretty simple. We've got a handout for that. So. Yeah, I'll give it to you in a second. So just to show you that there's not much difference between teaching these students and our other students, um, it's in line with mainstream pedagogies. So, for example, if you look at the top left one, story sharing, it's called story sharing. Um, they connect through the stories they share. And then, like our pedagogy, we can approach learning through narrative. So we can teach through telling a story, something like that. The next one down, learning maps. They picture their learning through pathways of the knowledge they already know, and that's what we can do as well. We can teach students to do mind maps, draw pictures, to help uh, visual learning, so. And the rest are all there, but I've got on the sheet for you. So we've got the next one. And the eight ways of pedagogy, Aboriginal pedagogy, is a framework which demonstrates how to teach through culture rather than about culture. So rather than having like an Asia day where it's like once a year and then we're gonna dress up as Asians, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with this, we're teaching throughout the whole year. So we're teaching <laughs> through the culture, we're incorporating their culture. And that's just part of respect, and it's going to help them learn as well. <laughs> okay, so this is an example. So there's a shell there. You can see shell. There's music. There's, that's a keyboard. There's a tree. So, for example, you know, there's the Boab tree. That's an indigenous tree. You can teach maths through that, the Fibonacci sequence, numbers. So trees grow on that. So you can see with the little tree image, you've got 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 30, etc. Um, with shells... So you can take them on a trip to some Aboriginal lands and get them to pick up shells and measure shells. And you can talk about the golden ratio, ratios, and relate um, mathematics to that. So if we're going to use, do that, we can use, like for example, the boomerangs. So I'll show you how you can line it up, uh, line up other um, learning through that. So first of all, obvious is physics. So when you throw the boomerang, you got you can learn about lift. Um, relative velocity and gyroscopic precision. So that means where, when the boomerang is spinning, you, you can measure like a cone and measure the, the path of the, the boomerang. 
Um, and in, within physics, you've got mathematics, so you can learn about mathematics, algebra, Newton's law, um, numbers, etc. And then you can learn about morality and danger. <laughs> so you don't want to you don't want to throw boomerangs around in class. So here's the little worksheet I'll just hand out, and I'll leave you with Maddie. Alrighty, so we had a look at uh, how you can use ICT and popular culture as effective ways uh, of teaching students um, in general, as well as Indigenous students in particular. Um, I found that on my last couple of placement experiences that ICT and popular culture seemed to go down really well with the majority of students, and I think it's because everyone can relate to it in one way or another. So engaging students. Teaching new content can be quite difficult for teachers, believe me, I would know, particularly when approaching a topic that can be perceived as uninteresting. So differentiation strategies in particular can be applied in order to maximise student engagement by adapting the curriculum and its required outcomes into exciting opportunities. So some of these strategies can include appealing to student interest, writing, learning back to students' cultures, providing practical hands-on experience, and so on and so forth. So ICT is a learning resource. Information and Communications Technology, ICT, is becoming more widely accepted and present within classrooms across the country, given its continual developments and ease of access. ICT resources provide students with many new learning opportunities, which may be otherwise inaccessible due to factors such as geographical location, learning impairments and difficulties, and a large variety of different applications, so word processing, multimedia, and so on. And geographical location, for instance, is an important part, um, of an important benefit of using ICT. More and more remote communities and um, outback schools are adopting ICT where available, and it is proven to be uh, quite helpful. So, can you get a show of hands of how many people during their professional experiences or in their general experiences in classrooms so far have seen a similar situation like this. Lots of students on their iPads, digital devices and so on and so forth. Yep, quite a few people. I know that my, my third and final prep placement, it was mandatory at our school that every student had to have an iPad instead of pen and paper. So they were very, very easy to access. So using ICT provides many different learning opportunities, including uh, opportunities present to Indigenous students by getting them involved. Um, there are many lessons to be learned while using uh, ICT tasks, and these can also be um, associated with uh, social and ethical implications of technology and not just content knowledge. So the Australian curriculum in particular encourages the usage, the usage of ICT in order to achieve student capabilities, but everyone's heard of that term before. And some of these aspects include applying social and ethical protocols, creating and communicating with ICT safely and securely, operating technology, and applying ICT skills to the learning areas. These are also capable, or these are also present in your professional standards. So how can you use ICT to engage students? So in an applicable classroom, ICT resources can be useful to create interesting methods of assessment for some students, and some of these methods include the following, so such as PowerPoint presentations, I'm going to miss one, interactive podcasts, videos and animations, blogs and websites, documentaries, and much more. So with specific reference to Indigenous students, ICT resources in conjunction with popular culture, including contemporary music, have proven incredibly successful. So music, as we have come to uh, learn so far, particularly in the eight domains of uh, Indigenous learning, is music is a universal device for anyone from any background, so regardless of gender, um, socioeconomic background, race and so on, they can uh, understand and relate to. So using music as a teaching tool is a great way to teach content which might be perceived as boring. Music is a powerful tool for self-expression. So for students who may be um, uncomfortable with conveying their emotions, um, this might be an effective way to get them over, uh, get them over these difficulties. So certain genres in particular like hip-hop and rap, perfect examples. So look, beautiful. Few... So just for a moment, if we on our tables, just have a chat amongst yourselves, and because you're all obviously familiar with the standards, so if you could, so we've got the 1.4 obviously, and standard 2.4. So if you guys could just talk amongst yourselves about, has, just first show of hands, who's worked with a, like a few or many Indigenous students? 
you know, so at least a couple on each table. So could you guys just have a chat for a moment about some of the strats, some of the ways you applied these standards? You've got one minute, go. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job. Everyone seemed really engaged. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start. We'll have you guys doing one. Oh, did you guys cover 1.4 or 2.4? Uh, probably 2.4. Okay, did you guys want to cover that for us for a minute? How did you apply that? Um, well, not specifically me, but on my last placement each Friday, the first lesson, they have um, a partial care. So for about four weeks of middle school students were focusing on pretty much standard 2.4. And what they did was one week they did a quiz to learn more about Aboriginal culture and also even like about celebrities and how much the students just didn't know about it. And then that week was raising awareness and um, doing some paintings and posters around the school. And then I can't remember what the last two weeks were on. But that was just a simple way and also to um, make sure it goes across the year. So, so they apply it as a curriculum. Mm. Essentially, yep. Yeah. Awesome. How about you guys over there? Um, we talked about understanding and respecting the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, culture um, on placement. Um, we did NAIDOC week and we had a few students that um, had moved from interstate and weren't from Ghana land. Yep. We had to talk about um, speaking to those parents and if they felt comfortable with their children participating in the Ghana land um, teachings that we were doing uh, and being mindful of not displaying. Um, Elders or members of the community that have passed away. It's like yep. particularly offensive and upsetting. Um, to, not to all of them necessarily. No, it's yeah. depending on so it's um, good to find out yeah, where first. they're from. And, um, yeah. and then also, um, yeah. and also the, the kinship, um, just understanding how families can run and um, yeah, just being respectful of yep. Fantastic. And you guys, quickly, we're running out of time, so... Um, we had a Pathways class, so it was just general well-being stuff, but within that class they had a very, um, what do you call it, very made towards Indigenous um, people and problems that they overcome yep. and things like that. So they used a lot of those examples of what's happened in the past to sort of connect with the kids. Yep, fantastic. And how about you guys with specifically teaching Indigenous students? Because I know there's a couple of your hands went up. Yeah, um, I taught at a school that had 60% Indigenous students, yeah, right. um, which was very hard to teach uh, um, Australian history as a white person yes. at the front of the room. Um, but it was really good and the students loved it and we had to take a different approach to what I probably usually would have just done in a, like, probably just... Um, off the top of my head teaching way, like I had to actually think about how I was going to approach it in a way that um, students could get involved in it as well and feel comfortable discussing with me. That was my main concern. Absolutely. So, yeah. Very cool. But you had a two-way thing going, which is yeah. fantastic. Awesome. So, um, and Akara, obviously, cross-curriculum priorities. Um, and one, uh, there's three areas that they, they focus on, which is country place, which Greg mentioned, um, and also culture and... Um, specifically in like local, national and global, the third key um, as well, which is, I thought was really, really interesting. Uh, so they don't just look at themselves, at, like we look at just Australia, but they actually look at themselves on a global uh, aspect as well, which is fantastic. So now we're bringing it all together and this is where it all starts to get exciting. So bear with us for another moment. Um, 
So incorporating all the areas, we're also looking at differentiation, learner profile, readiness and interest, because a lot of them, we need to know what their interests are and how ready they are, because a lot of their families might not be too interested in how well they go in school. And obviously teaching for reconciliation, you can use a hidden curriculum. So a lot of what we did here from some of the, some of the guys was in class things, like you know, we're set days or something, but you can also do it hidden. And some of the ways, um, oh, there we go, just elaborating on differentiation. Um, and so what I do is like while I'm teaching English thing, I might use say an example with text transformation where I used a, a poem and then just, you know, just, just a little poem just to say here's how someone had a voice within their own culture. So just to explain to people about, you know, having a voice for themselves. Um, so like, as an example of how you could now apply that with using differentiation by the uh, learner profile and, and having that choice. So you can ask them to write a rap. Now, obviously, it has to be socially. Um, like this one's Blackfellas. is a surf spot in uh, South Australia, which is where um, some Indigenous people were pushed off a cliff, which is pretty psycho. So you could say, find out that story, do some research, and write a story based on it. Um, obviously, you have to be culturally sensitive. So like if you're a, a white person, it might be a bit awkward trying to have a voice in that sense, but then you've got other things like recognising it's a white man's world or something like that. So giving, giving people the choice no matter what their background. Um, so that's a little bit more interesting for them. So we've got obviously interest-based curriculum. So if they are interested in football or, you know, Eddie Betts or something like that, look, they could look at someone like, like him. We almost met him the other day. We like, missed getting his uh, autograph by like this much. Uh, he's so cool. So, but now we're bringing it all in together, integrating the ICT and the different interests. What we've done uh, is we've done a rap video, and we'll get to that in a minute. So, what we did is we integrated all these different subject areas. So, media for your visual language, your scenes, your angles, your flow. Have a look at what scenes we do, because you can talk about visual language in that way. And obviously, ICT with your editing. Uh, using Adobe Audition for the, the we, we went all out, man. Uh, <laughs> and then obviously your English, uh, your you know, there's so many different areas. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. Book. Don't touch book. Um, and also <laughs> globalization because you're giving the indigenous peoples in by like say if they post on uh, YouTube, you've got a worldwide audience. Or uh, we're even thinking of posting ours on. Uh, overheard. Yeah. We'll see how Please it goes. Do. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> so, anyway, so just before I get into that, that's that's the fun part, so that's just to keep you hanging on for a moment. I did actually interview a teacher who has a very high percentage of um, Indigenous students, and she said that not all will know how to use technology, so you actually have to walk through it quite a lot, and they might not have it at home, so that's a critique for our own message as well. Um, they don't respond to authoritarian styles, so just telling off, you have to be way more inclusive and chatting things through. And a lot of them, in her particular case, don't care if they pass or fail. So they just won't rock up. doesn't matter. We don't care if we get Ds or fails or whatever. Uh, so it's something definitely to be aware of, and you need to be talking with their families. Now, this was not my particular interview, but I actually recorded this because I was doing some video and with an Indigenous elder, so I'm kind of claiming it for this assignment. I hope that's all right. Um, but one thing that came up with these elders when they were talking about the Indigenous cultures, what, uh, specifically in schooling, is that um, they believe that they shouldn't be allowed to go to the next grade until they've passed. Because there was a student in year 12 at a school that I worked at, and he was at like year 6 level literacy in, and numeracy and stuff, and he was in year 12, and no one could say that you had to fail. So as a community, uh, a lot of the elders uh, they believe that they should not be allowed to go up the next grade, which is a little bit of a critique. They were fairly blunt with that, with the education system. But that is something that you might come up with against in uh, the school. Now, having a growth mindset, who thinks that they can rap? Anyone? I know Kale can. <laughs> um, so, do you guys all have a growth mindset? that You may not now, but... You know, because Carol Dweck, as we all know and love, she says, I don't know how to do that yet. So I'd like to think that you're all ready to give it a, a go. But for now, we thought we would do our example. So today, today, this is the exciting part. So we'll come up to this, the culmination. Uh, we have the world premiere release of 
teachers with latitude. <laughs> now, I would like to point out, just before we move on to the much anticipated video, teacher advisory educational content. Greg took a lot of time to make that happen in the corner. So Thanks, Luke. Just, just enjoy that just for a moment. Okay, are you all ready? Because this, now we do this. <laughs> Stop do talking off too much. <laughs> no, no, no. I just have to explain. This was very hard to do, and we are la I'm anyway cacking myself in between trying to look very serious for this. Okay, so great, can't wait. Stop talking it up so much. All right, here we go. So how do we play? <laughs> Strength of academia. <laughs>
So, yeah, as you can tell, it was extremely embarrassing to do that, and we had people all over the place asking us what on earth we are doing. Um, but we did that so that you guys could all have a go. Now, we're not going to have time, so don't worry, you don't have to decide it. So. Oh, you can hear it. No, that's my time. <laughs> But, um, so if we were doing a professional engagement thing, a uh, teaching thing, obviously we would then inspire everyone just to do like maybe a couple of sentence wrap on a particular topic of their choice that has to do with education. But anyway, uh, so there you go. So there's our references and uh, thank you for watching Teachers with Attitude. <laughs>